a doctor of medicine. Tonight's story has the title, My Brother Joe. Guardian of birth, healer of the sick, comforter of the aged. To the profession of medicine, to the men and women who labor in its cause, this story is dedicated. Our presentation tonight is the field of neurosurgery. The object in point, two tickets of admission to a baseball game. The case in point, Joseph William Lockwood. He's 10 years old. One Saturday morning, he wakened to a day bright with promise. But through a chance of fate, it turned out differently than he expected. This is the account of that day.
5,900, Miss Swenson. All right, thanks very much. Dr. Bruce, the x-rays are ready on the boy. All right, let's go. If anything happens, call us later. All right, Doctor. Finally, there's... Ideal a little better than the answer. 
Why? The pressure's up, the pulse is slow, he's not improving at all. That's true, but there's one thing we have to remember. He's had no lucid interval. There's still no localizing signs. So we have to go on the basis of the primary damage to the brain produced by the blow could account for the whole picture. There's not much we can do about a bruised brain. How can we be sure he doesn't have an epidural or subdural along with the contusion? Pretty hard question to answer, especially in view of the fracture. I'm glad we put in a call for the staff consul. It's all a question of calculated risk, Luke. As much as we want that patient to live, we gotta remember we're not in the chairing section. We're not sitting out there with a room as brown as field. And so it's our problem to make the best possible decisions based on the facts at hand. Okay? I follow you. So the quiet, desperate struggle for the life of 10-year-old Joseph Lockwood continues. In order to aid the patient's respiration as much as possible, a tracheotomy is performed. An opening is made in the cartilage of the trachea, or windpipe, and a metal tube is inserted down through this opening, so the patient is no longer breathing through his mouth, but through the temporary emergency device. In this way, the air passage is more easily kept clear of fluids which tend to collect and obstruct the patient's breathing. Oxygen supply is then regulated to conform with this procedure. Well, that's it, Pierce. Yes. You're welcome, Doctor. That it? Right. Hi. Hi, John. Is it yeah. moving all right? Yeah. Good airway, exception of the strength field. Perspirations are becoming a little slower, though. Okay, then. Thanks a lot. Right. Yeah, all right, all right. We got the parents come down. 
It's all lined up with what's available. Yeah, we'll be up right away. That's man? Uh-huh. Frank Kirkman. He's elevating while you're in X-ray. He's waiting for us in 15. All right, let's go. What time is it, Stan? Oh, what's this job? It's almost 5.30. I got you something, sir? Maybe a cup of coffee, a sandwich, maybe. No, thanks, sir. Nothing right now. Ask Mother. Maybe she'd like something. I got you something. Do you care for a cup of coffee? Get away from here. Can't you try to be civil? That's the least you could do at a time like this. Get away from me. Haven't changed a bit, have you? You're still the important one. Nobody matters, just you. Everything takes second place, even your own children. You've got your nerve. How can you even mention the children? Well, you've done things to me before. But I never dreamed to do a thing like this. It's out of your mind. Do you think I meant to hurt you? What difference does it make what you meant? You did it. It's on your conscience. You could mention a few things that should be on your conscience. That is, if you have such a thing as a conscience. You've got your nerve. You of all people. You cared nothing for me. You cared nothing for the boys. They're not even a bad father. They're no father at all. And I suppose you're the loving mother. The loving, devoted mother. Don't make me laugh. You fool. You stupid, conceited fool. Be quiet. Stand. Both of you, be quiet. If you can't act decent, then get out. Leave right now. I'll look after Joe. Wait a minute, son. He's done without you for a long time. We both have. We don't need either one of you. As far as I'm concerned, I don't care if I ever see you again. You can walk out that door and be gone forever. We're not going to miss you. You're supposed to be our mother and father. I don't understand you. I don't know you. I never did know you. Same for Joe. He's been so busy fighting that we never had a chance to know you. Go on, leave right now. Take your fighting outside. Go out and fight on the sidewalk. Stanley, please don't. Please, nothing. I've heard it all my life. I've heard all I want to hear. Fighting, arguing, calling names. Can't you ever be nice? Can't you act like a mother and father is supposed to act? This is cool. Their folks are nice. They like each other. Why can't you be like them? Even now, Joey in there, all banged up. All you can do is fight and argue. I, I know what you're like now. I didn't want to, but I, I finally made up my mind. You don't care about Joe. You don't care about me. Well, that goes both ways. We don't care about either one of you. Go on, leave right now. You, you probably got things to do. Forget about me. Forget about Joe. And you can count on it. You can count on it for sure. We're going to forget about you. Once again, a most critical problem is met with the most critical decision. With the patient deteriorating and his coma deepening, possibility of a blood clot, however slight, cannot be ruled out. There's little hope in performing the operation, but there's no hope at all if the operation is not performed. Openings approximately one half inch in diameter are made on both sides of the skull in the temporal area, and the exposed surface is examined for evidence of epidural or subdural blood clots. 
There's little hazard in the procedure compared to what might be gained from it. The struggle goes on to the end, to the bitter, incontestable end. Would you get his things, please? His clothes? I'll, I'll take them. All right, sir. Dad? Sh shall we go home? All right, sir. The rain. The rain won't, oh, honey. Final observation regarding the outcome of tonight's case. A physician faced with the problem of managing a head injury received from a severe blow cannot always predict the outcome or determine at once the course of immediate and future treatment. Close observation and every therapeutic advantage is utilized in the hope that a tragedy such as this one can be averted. <laughs> <laughs> 